At this time, please welcome to the stage the Director of Events for the Ovarian Cancer Research Fund, Claudia Shapiro. too many to lose. Those are mothers, daughters, and someone's ch child. One is too many. We need to stop this, and we can. We're really, really close. So thank you again for being here tonight. We greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much. Get on with the show. Thank you, Hannah. My sweet darling, oh my dearest love, I'll count the hours that you're away. Oh darling, so will I. Not on the lips. I'm yours, all of me. What else can I say? My sweet love. The hair, the hair. Oh, that's it. And hello, hello. Um. Excuse me, darling. Tell me exactly what is it that you do do. <laughs> In our circles, in our circles, in our circles, in our circles. This lady claims to be a Eunice Burns. I am not a Eunice Burns. I am the Eunice Burns. Oh, the oh. nail! So how about it, honey? Just for a little while, let old Trixie sit up front with her big tits. <laughs> Hi, Gore. Would you help me with these bags? Certainly. You take the blonde, and I'll take the one in the table. Oh, please. <laughs> Stop that. <laughs> Marker. Oh, my sweet darling. Oh, my dearest love. I'll count the hours that you're away. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Hannah Burke.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my tribute to the great Madeline Kahn. Thank you so much. Tonight, will we be honoring Madeline's life and career through her songs and stories, and in general, showing a little love to a brilliant comedian, actress, and singer who left us far too soon. For it is love that rules forevermore. It's true. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you so much for being here tonight, and thank you so much, Claudia Shapiro, uh, Director of Events for Ovarian Cancer Research Fund. It's such an honor for you to be here tonight. Thank you. I'm so excited to be back in the Metropolitan Room. And uh, tonight, um, whether you know a little bit about Madeline Kahn or whether you know nothing at all, that's okay. I'm going to tell you a little bit. Um, I first uh, found a new or watched, wow, I first saw Madeline Kahn <laughs> in her Mel Brooks films, and I was immediately taken by her uniqueness. I, uh, I do believe that Blazing Saddles was my first rated R movie when I was about eight years old. Thank you, Mom and Dad. This is your fault. <laughs> but my favorite was Young Frankenstein. There is nothing, I just, I, there was nothing I'd ever seen like her. And still, about 20 years later, there still isn't anything like her. Now, if you don't mind, I'd like to tell you a little bit about how this show came together, because it's, uh, I think it's kind of interesting. Now, <laughs> I uh, actually work here at the Metropolitan Room. And when you, thank you, Christopher. <laughs> And uh, when you work at a cabaret club, it's kind of insinuated that you should probably do a show, right? So I was trying to figure out what to do, and I was very inspired one night seeing a show, and I decided I wanted to do a tribute on somebody that I loved, an actress that I loved. And I immediately thought, Madeline Kahn, of course. So I was talking my face off about it, and all the ideas, I was very excited, annoying Tom and Joseph and everybody. And then Joseph, uh, the booking manager here at the Metropolitan Room, he said, there's actually another Madeline Kahn tribute happening. It was a few months later, and I was very excited. I was like, what a coincidence. And uh, they asked if I wanted to sing I'm Tired. I was absolutely thrilled. I didn't know anything about it. I was actually out of town at the time. So anyway, I get back into town, and I have rehearsal right before the show, two days before the show, and I find out that the host of the evening was William V. Madison, who had just written her biography. I, thanks. Thank you. <laughs> I was absolutely thrilled. Um, not to mention I performed with many of her co-stars, Broadway co-stars and friends in New York. I was totally starstruck, had a wonderful time, bought the book as soon as I could get my hands on one, and the rest is history, <laughs> as you can see. Here we are. Now, oh, I want to prop it up, though. <laughs> She's so pretty. Now... <laughs> Uh, you, I want to say a little bit about how um, I, why I named the show what I did. I found a uh, bit of a, tr uh, uh, <laughs> a bit of a thing happening within the book that um, Madeline would often ask this question, whether she was in rehearsal, in a performance, or even in the real world. She would ask, "Why are you laughing?" Madeline was very calculated and serious about her comedy, and. Uh, she said once that she always sees sort of the, the tragedy beneath what's funny, and that's only important to her. Or as her good friend Lolly, uh, Lily Tomlin described, uh, uh, she's someone who says things funny, not someone who says funny things. Now let's begin with Madeline's first book musical, which was Showboat, actually, and she played the ingenue Magnolia. Now, uh, and although she was known for saying things in a funny way, her co-star, Richard Fredericks, assured us that she played the ingenue as written. But Madeline did struggle a bit with this uh, concert, and her co-star suspected that uh, she had never kissed a man on stage unless it was for laughs. Perhaps he suspected this because he had to ask her to take the gum out of her mouth first. She took the gum out of her mouth and put it behind her ear and then back in her mouth at the end of the scene. We could make believe I love you. We could make believe that you love me. Others find peace of mind in pretending. Couldn't you? Couldn't I? Couldn't we? 
taught to sing by her mother, who was a fame-obsessed opera singer herself. And I wish that I had more time to talk about her mother, but like any mother-daughter juicy relationship, that would take far longer than an hour. <laughs> so I'm going to leave those chapters to those who purchased the book. <laughs> Shh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> now... <laughs> Thanks, Jody. Now, as we know, or some of us know, Madeline used that vocal training in several of her films on Broadway and uh, to the either excitement or perhaps jealousy of her mother in the opera world a few times. But uh, Madeline certainly had her fair share of bad luck on the stage. She was fired from How Dow Dow Jones at the end of the Boston tryouts. Then New Faces of 1968 closed after only a few weeks. Her next show would be her first Broadway success. But, as we know, bad luck comes in many different forms. The show was two by two, the retelling of the story of Noah's Ark. And starring as Noah was the famous and infamous Danny Kay. Now, Danny Kay was described to be the ensemble's worst nightmare. He would steal funny lines and songs, he would go off book, he would break character, he even changed the ending of the show a few times. Eventually, the cast had enough, and one by one, they stopped talking to him. Or perhaps two by two. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but uh, uh, Madeline stayed on his good side for some reason and, 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 and put up with him. However, years later, when she was cast in On the 20th Century, the producers suggested casting Danny Kaye as her co-star. She quickly replied, sign him, lose me. Let me see, let me see, when would I be available? When would I be free? March, September, June, November 1933 1934 35 36 Never 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 that is the word I use Never that is the word I choose Tell him you really try, tell him, tell him that really I'd rather die. Never, never is much too quick, never, he makes me much too sick. Let him save his own hateful hide, let him know he's so hateful, I'd rather die. Never, I hear that his failure has been fantastic. <laughs> Something drastic. Oh. Lily, he hasn't a conflict on which to borrow. Lovely. Taking this theater away tomorrow. Never, that is the word I speak. Never, that is the word I speak. Yeah. Tell him you heard it here. Yeah, tell him, tell him you heard it here. Yeah, tell him, if he comes through that door, I will trample him through. Tell him, tell him I'll strangle him. Tell him, tell him I'll mangle him. Tell him, tell him that I hate him so much. It, it, the, the flames, flames, flames on the side of my face, breathing breath, heaving breaths. Go back with him. Here's my reply. Let me see. 
looking forward to escaping two by two, Madeline actually booked her first feature film before the Broadway run had even ended. The film was What's Up, Doc? Yes, and when she went in to audition for Peter Bogdanovich, it turned out to be more like an interview. They just talked. Bogdanovich said that Madeline had this wonderful, funny voice and this very straight delivery, and he just thought she was hilarious. But Madeline was just being herself. She was not trying to be funny. And so she repeatedly asked throughout the interview, why are you laughing? And he replied, because you're funny. <laughs> well, uh, Madeline was cast as Eunice Burns, the shrill and unattractive fiance of Howard Bannister, played by Ryan O'Neill. Now, Madeline described Eunice as her great fortune, but sort of a blow to her spirit. She dubbed her the ugly stepsister and became incredibly self-conscious of her appearance. She was afraid that people actually saw her that way. She was afraid that people were laughing at her. But despite all of her insecurities, Madeline threw herself into the role, the film was a hit, and Madeline immediately went into therapy. With a million neon rainbows burning below me, and a million blazing taxis raising a roar. Here I am above the town in my pet pirated gown, down in the depths on the ninetieth floor. While the crowds in all the nightclubs punish the parquet, and the bars are packed with couples calling for more, 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 more. I'm deserted and depressed in my regal eagle nest down in the depths on the night of Suddenly, Madeline was a movie star, and her next film, also with McDonovich, earned her an Oscar nomination. Her nine-year-old co-star, Tatum O'Neill, ended up winning the award. But that monologue of the hill in Paper Moon is one of Madeline's most beautiful moments in film. Now, as many of us know, in this industry, we are often put in competition with one another who are um, similar types, similar vocal styles, or um, something as shallow as similar hair colors, even. One of these women for me happens to be my best friend, Rachel Joyce, who you will meet in a moment. Oh, sweet Hi, no, 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 and Lucille Ball. Now Lucy comes into play in Madeline's next film, which for Madeline didn't end up happening at all. The film was a screen adaptation of Mame, which would star Lucille Ball as Mame. Uh, now there's a few different versions of this next story, and as Bill Madison very cleverly put, it all depends on how much you love Lucy. <laughs> <laughs> now, one story says that Madeline or Lucy just did not care for Madeline's acting style, right? But one account holds that Lucy had seen Madeline in What's Up Doc and expected her to be the frumpy Eunice Burns that she played so well. But of course, Madeline arrived on set. She was gorgeous. She was 30 years younger than Lucy and a redhead. Lucy took one look at Madeline, went back to her dressing room, and shut the door. And a few minutes later, Madeline was told that she had been fired her first day on set. 
There's always a woman to spoil the illusion, the rotten banana that ruins the bunch. There's always a woman who causes confusion. There's nothing as low as a woman. We must lunch. Love to. Noonish. Tomorrow. Today. My place. Mine. There's always a woman. The one disappointment, the note that goes sour and gums up the tune. The ant at the picnic, the fly in the ointment. There's nothing as low as a woman. Ring me soon. Love to. Au revoir. Leaving? I thought. I know. I tried. There's, There's always, always a woman. The counterfeit chick. The snake in the wood pile. The pain in the neck. The sand in the oyster. That isn't the pearl. There's nothing as low as a woman. Darling girl, pet, lamb, dove, fish. The run in the stocking, the snag in the zipper, the weather in London, the water in France. There's always a woman, it's Jacqueline the Ripper. There's nothing as low as a woman. Shall we dance? Waltz, rumba, can can, tango, shottish, shabbat, cha cha, tap. Bolero, polka, bridge, two hearts, three clubs. I pass. There's always a woman, a crimp in the writing, the hole in the sidewalk, the gum on the shoe. She almost looks human. Must be the lighting. Whatever it is, it's a woman. How are you? I'm petty. There's always a woman, the hand in the two. The five dollar diamond, the three dollar bill, a genius for trickery that's second to none. There's, There's nothing, nothing as low as a woman. Isn't this is fun? fun? Lovely. Charming. Delicious. Stunning. Fabulous. Gorgeous. Exquisite. A knife would be perfect. A gun would be perfect. It's quick and it's quiet. At least I could try it. I hear they do wonders. And you can do wonders. With poison gas. With slivers of glass. There's always the quarry. There's always the quarry. She'd never be found. I have some around. A noose is efficient. Bamboo is efficient. She won't make a sound. As long as it's ground. Whatever will do it. Whatever will do it. If anything will. If anything will. There's, There's nothing, nothing as low as a woman. woman. Sneak. Cheat, crook, frump, fake, bore, bag, lynch, crow, witch, ghoul, police, shoot to kill. <laughs> Rachel Joyce, luckily, after being fired from May, Madeline stayed in Hollywood and attended her first audition with Mel Brooks. Job to offer battle to bad men near and far. He called. No. Oh, the no, no, thank you. Um, <laughs> Will Anderson, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> now, Madeline said, My audition for Mel for Blazing Saddles was intense. It lasted two hours. I felt like I was at the Mayo Clinic. For a funny man, he's very serious. And Mel Brooks would say the same thing about her. He remembers the audition vividly. <clears throat> Lily von Stupp. Are you really gonna go with that name? Uh, show me your legs. Well, don't you wanna hear me read first? Uh, let me see your legs. What are you, crazy? What is this? I thought I was coming here to audition for your movie. I didn't think you wanted to screw me on your desk. I'm a happily married man, but this is a Marlena Dietrich part, and Lily has to straddle a chair and to wear net stockings like Dietrich. I need to see if you have Dietrich legs. So Madeline lifted her skirt and said, no touching. Here I stand, they got they solve this aisle. <laughs> Set men on fire. I have this power. Morning, noon, and night is drinking, dancing. 
some quick fomencing and then a shower. <laughs> State store Johnny's constantly surround me. They always hound me with one request. <laughs> Who can satisfy their lustful habits? I'm not a webbit. I need somewhere else. I'm tired, sick and tired of love. I've had my fill of love from below and above. Tired of being admired, tired of love and inspired. Let's face it, I'm tired. I've been with thousands of men again and again. They promised the moon. They're always coming and going and going and coming and always too soon. White girls, I'm tired. Tired of playing the game. Ain't it a crying shame? I'm so tired. Yeah, damn it, I'm exhausted. <laughs> Hello, cowboy. What's your name? Tex, ma'am. Tex, ma'am. Well, tell me, Tex, ma'am. Are you in show business? No. Nope. Well, then why don't you get your friggin' feet off the stage? Ah, 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 ah. Hello, handsome. Is that a 10 gallon hat or are you just enjoying the show? Everything below the waist is kaput. Oh, that's so not fun to do. Now, thank God for Blazing Saddles, because it not only introduced Madeline to Mel Brooks, it introduced Madeline to the great Gene Wilder. Now, as, as um, Claudia said earlier, I am donating the ticket proceeds to the Ovarian Cancer Research Fund in honor of Madeline, but also now in honor of Gene Wilder, because he dedicated years of his life raising awareness uh, for the disease after it took his dear wife, Gildna Radner, and his dear friend, Madeline Kahn. So... With that, as uh, in Blazing Saddles, if we've all seen it, some of us have noticed that, uh, or it's a fact, some of us have noticed, that doesn't make any sense, <laughs> that uh, Gene Wilder and Madeline aren't in any scenes together in the movie. 
But Gene Wilder snuck in and he stayed to, to watch I'm Tired for every single take. <laughs> Later he told Mel if the whole movie were just that one number, it would be worth the price of admission. Mel and Gene became determined to find Madeline a role in their next film, Young Frankenstein. Now, Gene thought that Madeline would have preferred to be the sexy laboratory assistant, Inga, but Mel wanted her to be Dr. Frankenstein's fiancée, Elizabeth. They let Madeline choose. <laughs> Benny, for your thoughts. Mm. <laughs> oh, you're incorrigible, aren't you? You little zubberneck. <laughs> mm. <laughs> oh, all right. Seven always has been my lucky number. <laughs> Come over here, you hot monster. <laughs> what is it? What's the matter? Is it that music? I, I, I'm sure it's just coming from some nearby cottage. Nothing to worry. Where? Where are you going? What? Oh, you men are all alike. Seven or eight quick ones and you're off with the boys to boast and brag. You'd better keep your mouth shut. Oh, oh I think I love him. <laughs> Johnny was bashful and shy. Nobody understood why Mary loved him. All the other girls passed him by. Everyone wanted to know how she could pick such a bow with a twinkle in her eye. She made this reply. He's not so good in the crowd. But when you get him alone, you'd be surprised. He's not so good at the dance, but then when he takes you home, you'd be surprised. At a party or at a ball, you've got to admit he's nothing at all. But in an easy chair, you'd be surprised. Mary continued to praise Johnny's remarkable ways to the ladies. And you know advertising pays. Now Johnny's never alone. He has the busiest phone almost every other day. A new girl will say, Not so good in the house, but on a bench in the park, you'd be surprised. He's not so good in the light, but when he gets in the dark, you'd be surprised. I know he looks so small and so eerie, but you don't know the half of it, dearie. He looks as cold as an Eskimo, but there's fire in his eyes. He hasn't said very much. But when he starts in a speech, you'd be surprised. He's not so good at the start, but at the end of the week, you'd be surprised. On a streetcar or in a train, you think he was born without any brain, but in a taxi. Uh, Mel Brooks actually wrote from Elizabeth, or Madeline's character Elizabeth to sing cheek to cheek instead at the uh, love making scene with the monster but she got the idea asked Mel if she could try it and just like that ah sweet mystery of life became her trademark 
Now, after Young Frankenstein, Gene Wilder made his directing debut in The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes's Smarter Brother, in which he cast Madeline as Jenny Hill, the London music hall artiste and opera singer. And this movie truly seems like Gene Wilder's Valentine to Madeline because it allowed her to showcase all of her talents from opera singing to some even very serious acting moments. Years later, though, Mel Brooks said that Gene Wilder left him to make the movies and Madeline left him to star in the movies. But he also said that you, she realized you can't star in something unless it's really good. You need a good script. Max, I've got to reread this play, Babette. Get Oscar and the Mary Magdalene play out of my mind. An evening late in June, a formal dinner at Babette's. The talk is dark and swift, and yet the atmosphere is fraught with tension. Everyone is there, corrupt. <laughs> And de Bonaire, a Mayfair set convention. Babette speaks. I gave this small soiree to tell you all the shrieking news. I'm leaving Rodney's bed. The joke is that I'm also leaving Nigel. What a shabby lot. Bedecked with jewels between two fools. Oh, hope is gone. The dance goes on and make the music. Hot. Rodney speaks. Babette, if you think that you can throw away, and so and so and so and so. Nigel speaks. Whoa, Babette, the charade will have to win, and so and so and so. Rodney, why you feel these slight, and so and so and so and so. And the guests chatter, and so and so and so and so and so. Babette! My cigarette is out. Oh, Rodney, please get me a light. I need another drink. She sneers and hurls a glass of gin at Nigel. What a shabby lot. I'll get away to Central Pay in gin at Betos, drown my jitters. Hey, look at that. You would be magnificent as Mary Magdalene. Yes, take your wine away. Reborn am I today, redemption. Our sins will be forgiven, and we shall be. No. <laughs> I need another drink. I think I'd like a sip of champagne. Or better still, a snort of cocaine. Or better still, let us seek salvation. My cigarette is out. The gin is never strong enough. I live for endless loving, boozing, dancing, cruising. We shall be saved. Boozing, dancing, cruising. We shall be saved. Rodney, Nigel, Rodney, boozing, dancing, cruising. We shall be. My cigarette is saved. My cigarette is saved. My cigarette is saved. Where are you, Rodney, Nigel, Nigel, Rodney, Rodney, Nigel, Oscar, 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 Oscar. Goodbye, Oscar. Goodbye, Mary Magdalene. Max, I love your play. Max, I'll do this play.
song. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so now the films that Madeline made with Gene Wilder and Mel Brooks cast her, as you may have noticed, in these very ultra-sexy, very bawdy kind of characters that were very unlike her real-life personality. Again, she was questioning why everyone was laughing. Also because of these roles, Madeline became a bit of a sex symbol, and uh, people became interested in more than her talent, shall we say. Thank you. <laughs> Now, uh, once in an interview for the New York Times, uh, the interviewer, which was a woman, actually, instead of focusing on her work, asked about her marriage prospects instead. But thankfully now, sexism is dead nowadays and we have nothing to worry about. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> uh, now, so, <laughs> Madeline responded to this. I think the fact that I'm funny scares a lot of men. I might consider marriage if I met a man with a sense of humor. It would be like being in jail otherwise. and to keep you, to honor you forever. Today is for Amy, my happily soon to be one. Pardon me as everybody there because of everybody's there. I want to thank you all for coming to the wedding. I'd appreciate you going even more. I mean, myself lots of better things to do. Not a word if it's a poem. Remember, Paul, you know the man I'm going to marry, but I'm not because I wouldn't ruin anyone as wonderful as he is. Thank you all for the gifts and the flowers. Thank you all. Now it's back to the showers. And don't tell Paul, but I'm not getting married today. Everybody, look, I don't know what you're waiting for. A wedding? What's a wedding? It's a prehistoric ritual where everybody promises fidelity forever, which is maybe the most horrifying word I've ever heard, which is followed by a honeymoon where suddenly he realized that he settled with a nut and want to kill me, which he should. Thanks a bunch, but I'm not getting married. Go have lunch, because I'm not getting married. You've been grand, but I'm not getting married. Don't just stand there. I'm not getting married. And don't tell Paul, but I'm not getting married today. Go, can't you go? Why is nobody listening? Goodbye, go and cry at another person's wake. If you're quick for a kick, you can pick up the christening. But please, on my knees, there's a human life at stake. Listen, everybody, I'm afraid you didn't hear it. Do you want to see a crazy lady fall apart in front of you? And it isn't only Paul being ruining his life. You know, the both of us are losing our identities. I telephone my analyst about it, and he says, see money, but my money will be floating in the Hudson with the other garbage. I'm not well, so I'm not getting married. You've been swell, but I'm not getting married. Thank you all, but I'm not getting married. Clear the hall, because I'm not getting married. And don't tell Paul, but I'm not getting married today. Bless this bride. You know I adore you all, but why watch me die like Eliza on the ice? Look, perhaps I'll collapse in the abs right before you. Also, take back the cake, burn the shoes, and boil the rice. 
Look, I didn't want to have to tell you, but I may be going down with hepatitis. I think I'm gonna faint. So you want to see me fade out to an happily one more nip beside you? Or to go and watch a funeral? So think I'm for the 27th. Dinner place, 37th. Butter guys, 47th. People waits, feminists, and kettle orders. I am not getting married. Okay. But I'm not getting married. Okay. See, I'm not getting married. Still not getting married. Let us pray that I'm not getting married today. Madeline did end up getting married. She met John Hansbury at a party with mutual friends, and everyone said that it was like watching a scene out of a movie. From the moment they met, they ignored everyone else in the room. One advantage that Hansbury had over other men was that he actually liked her sense of humor. In fact, he adored her, and they were together until the very end. <laughs> The stars at bazaars up and I've had two Five or ten dollars then I collect from all those yes men. Don't be sad, I'm as sad that they meant no more than chess men. Darling, can't you see? Twas for charity. Though these lips have made slips, it was never really serious. Who'd have thought I'd be brought from a state that's so delirious? I could cry. Now, aren't these boys fabulous? Simon Fishburne on the drums, ladies and gentlemen. Billy Smolin on the bass. And wonderful Jeff Cubetta on the piano. Well done, gentlemen. And from now on, I want every man among you to be on your toes. 
1995, Madeline was part of a concert staging of Sondheim's Anyone Can Whistle, which was put on for the gay men's health crisis. In this, she played the corrupt mayoress, Cora Hoover Hooper, in uh, a role originated by Angela Lansbury. Now, Madeline and the cast struggled a bit with this concert, for as if Sondheim songs weren't difficult enough, they did not have enough rehearsals. And uh, Angela Lansbury was actually approached to reprise the role of the mayoress for the concert, but she decided to be the narrator for the evening instead. However, apparently after seeing Madeline in uh, rehearsals, Miss Lansbury remarked that perhaps she should have done it after all. Everyone hates me, yes, yes. Being the mayoress, yes. All of the peasants throw rocks in my presence, which causes me nervous distress, yes. Oh, 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 oh. Me and my town battered about. Everyone in it would like to get out. But me and my town, we just want to be loved. Stalls are for rent. Theaters are dark. Grass on the sidewalks, but not in the parks. Me and my town, we just want to be loved. you. Come on the train, come on the bus. Somebody please buy a ticket to us. Hurry on down. We need a little renown. Love me, love my town. Ooh. The bank went broke and I'm feeling blue. And who took over the bankruptcy? Me, boys, me. CC. Me, boys, me. Tell us, Cora, how you are. I just got back from the reservoir. And what's the state of the water supply? Dry, boys, dry. My, my. Dry, boys, dry. Dry, dry. dry. Has responsibilities Responsibilities. and civic pride. Civic pride. Well, I look around and what do I see? I see no crops. No crops. I see no business. No business. To the north, to the south, only hoof and mouth. To the east, to the west, no community chest. I see a terrible depression all over the town. Ooh, a terrible depression. Yes, a terrible depression. Yes, a terrible depression. I'm so depressed I can hardly talk on the phone. I feel all alone, but a, a lady, lady has, has responsibilities. Responsibilities. To all my poor, ah, cold, ah, starving, ah, ah, miserable, dirty, dreary, ah, depressing. Peasants. peasants. A lady has responsibilities. Responsibilities. To try to be popular with the populace. She's unpopular with the populace. Unpopular, unpopular with the populace. And popular with the populace. Unpopular with the populace. Everyone here hates me at length. Probably lynch me if they had the strength. <laughs> but me and my town. Me and my we just want to be loved. We just want to be loved. Just love. A friendship is lovely and a courtship sublime. Ooh. Give her a township. Township every time. What do we do? Me and my town. Gotta do something or we're gonna drown. Give me my home.
lots of little numbers in this show. <clears throat> <laughs> Now, overall, we have uh, seen that Madeline has not have the had, unfortunately, has not had the best experiences on the New York City stage. But the worst of these experiences was certainly the original Broadway production of On the 20th Century. Yeah, I know. It's such a good show. Well, I, read the book. <laughs> no, but so the, the musical features an extremely demanding score written by Cy Coleman with vocal lines that few actresses can pull off while also being funny eight times a week. Now, there's a lot of controversy surrounding why Madeline left this production. Some say that she was fired. Madeline claimed it was because of vocal strain. And some even rumored that she had a drug problem. Mm -mm. Shameless plug, Bill Madison has written a long and juicy chapter on this show. It is fascinating. And you will have to, oh, the, the book is back there. But you'll have to read the book to find out that whole story. It's very interesting. Now, whatever the reason, Madeline left after only a few months. And for years to come, she worked very hard to redeem herself on Broadway. Live theater. No, just... Hi. <clears throat> hey. Wait. Voters. I see flags. I hear bells. There's a parade in town. I see clouds. I hear yells. There's a parade in town. I hear drums in the air. I see clowns in the square. I see marchers marching, tossing hats at the sky. Did you hear? Did you see? Is a parade in town? Were there drums without me? Is a parade in The flutes are squeaky, the banners are frayed. Any parade in town without me must be a second class parade. So, ha! Luckily, years later, Madeline finally did more than redeem herself in Wendy Wasserstein's smash hit production of The Sisters Rosin's Why. Madeline played the character Dr. Gorgeous, a role I also got to play in college. Now this role finally gave Madeline the recognition that she deserved and showcased that on top of Gorgeous being hilarious, Madeline's talents spread far beyond comedy. Madeline was nominated and won the Tony for best performance of an actress in a leading role and was very, very joyfully presented the award by her good friend, Lily Tomlin. Now, The Sisters Rosin's Wife would be Madeline's last performance on Broadway. And in addition to her last film, Judy Berlin, as well as a small tour of Hello, Dolly, these late performances truly should have been the beginning of a very exciting new era of Madeline's career. Before the parade passes by, I'm gonna go and taste Saturday's high life. Before the parade passes by, I'm gonna get some life back into my life. I'm ready to move out in front. I've had enough of just passing by life. With the rest of them, with the best of them, I can hold my head up high. Cause I've got a goal again, I've got a drive again, I'm gonna feel I hear bells, there's a parade in town. I see crowds, I hear yells, 
There's a parade in town. I hear drums in the air. I see clowns in the square. I see marchers marching, tossing hats at the sky. Did you hear? Did you see? Was a parade in town? Were there drums without me? Was a parade in town? When the whistles blow and the cymbals crash and the sparklers light the sky, I'm gonna raise the roof, I'm gonna carry on. Give me an old trombone, give me an old baton before the parade. Gentlemen, I want to thank a few people tonight. Bernie and Joanna, the Metropolitan Room, thank you so much for having me. Claudia Shapiro, thank you so much for being here. Johnny Mercado on Lights and Sound. Uh, Rachel down in the basement taking video and live stream. Everybody watching on live stream right now. <laughs> and my uh, band, Simon Fishburne, Billy Small, and Jeff Cubetta. My, my cookies, my helpers, my best friends, Adrian Rafat. Thank you. Will Anderson and Rachel Joyce. And last but not least, William V. Madison. Thank you for everything. Now this next song I have chosen for last because it is possibly the most important song of Madeline's career and also possibly one of her least known. It was written for Madeline by a man she met right after college he saw her potential, and they would become lifelong friends. His name was Michael Cohen, and I had the honor of meeting him at Bill Madison's tribute a year and a half ago. Das Chicago Song was Madeline's ticket to Broadway, as well as her audition song for Mel Brooks. It was a play off of a Kurt Vile piece, and she continued to sing it for the, her entire life. There is a strange foreign city, 6,000 miles from Berlin, near to the mountains where the Mississippi flows, a magic town where the drugstore never closed. I know too well its mystics fair. I met my love in that city. God, how I took it on the chin. <laughs> He took my love and then he sailed away Somewhere east of Stuttgart on the road to Mandalay Now in a third-rate cafe In Welschmittstrasse 93 There's a Berlin girl a waiting For her lover from that city across the sea Me I remember it yet, that faraway city where we met. You walked up to me and you tipped your hat and you kicked my dog and that was that. Gangsters croon on the Spanish guitar And the thump of the traffic And the roar of the woodman's ex in all Chicago Remember, it makes Then you smiled and said that you meant no harm And you took my hand and you broke my arm And before I could stop your nasty line You pulled a knife and said be mine Filthy swine mix toy. Mm. 
in all Chicago, remember it makes. Then you broke my jaw with a single punch, and you took my seat and you ate my lunch. And you sailed away when the trade winds blow without the goodbye, without the hello. Where did you go, Mix? Did all that do, Mix? I loved you so, Mix. You felt Ladies and gentlemen, Hannah Burke. I forgot to mention Bill Madison. We will be uh, selling and signing the book in the lobby after the show. Thank you so much. We have to pick the suitors for the midnight orgy. <laughs> oh, yeah, that almost forget. Mm. It's a very nice selection. I'm going to start on this end. Yes? No, 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 no. Yes? No, 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 no. Yes? No, no, yes? No, 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 no. Yes! No, 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 yes, no, 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 